world, people. This is Jerry speaking. Welcome to Crazy Bunch's web show. So, excuse me. Episode number 63. Today we're doing not one, not two, but seven dev topics today. And we're going to do one more topic after this because next week there will not be a Crazy Bunch's web show episode. But there will be one in the month of June to begin with. So let's do it now. So shall we? So we got. Maggie Pearson. She was an American actress and singer. But she was best known for playing Charlene, Charlene Dolly in the Annie Graves show, okay? She's also played the character The Doors in the episode of Girl for Goober from 1968 in the season 8 um, thing. Anyway, um, the youngest of four children. Pearson was born in Greenwich, Colorado on January 10th, 1941. To Arthur and Fraser Hill Pearson. Her father was a doctor and her mother was a homemaker, okay? Aside from the Annie Graves show, Pearson also appeared on other TV shows such as Love American Style, Green Acres, Go Power USMC, and The Odd Couple, okay? She's also appeared in episode of Mary Mayberry RFD as Ina, okay? Um, a cave waitress, okay? And a 1986 film, Return of Mayberry, okay? As an instrument, well, Ellen, okay? In the 1969 um, film, uh, Love God, okay? Starring next to Don Knotts, okay? And 1968 film, Angel in the, My Pocket, okay? Pierce landed in the role as Susie, coffee shop waitress, on the Billy Dana Show, okay? Another spinoff from the Daily T Day Thomas Show, okay? Well, Jerry from September 6, 1963. To January 1965, okay? Pearson grew up in a musical family. Well, grew up in Colorado, she has her, her earliest memories of, of music. Pierce and her brother Jim were two of this Jim's friends, former small group called the John ja Dog Quartet, okay? They arrived along the back of the pickup truck singing to, pe singing to people, okay? In 1954, in the Capitol Records Commission, Dick uh, Lick, Link, excuse me, so anyway, Manager Manny Griff and Jim Neighbors heard Pearson uh, singing was um, so impressed with her, okay? He encouraged her to come to New York, and so in 1958, after graduating from high school, Pearson and the group did just that, okay? They ran a number of sets for the Pierre Combo Show, okay? And the Patty Pat Boehm Show, okay? In 1959, they released their album, It's the Most Happy Sound. Soon afterwards, the band broke up and went back home. Wow, okay. Short time later, Pearson joined another group, the early um, material tri trio, later named Margaret Ann, the early metal trio. The group traveled from several years and had stints um, in her in resorts area. Such as Los Angeles and like uh, Chahu and Reno, where Frank Sinatra and the and the like rat uh, pack were often seen in the audience where Pearson performed. Okay, it was while she was on the tour that Maggie was discovered by the Angry Show um, director Bob Sweet and producer Aaron Robin. The for the Angry Show. Pierce and eventually read with the role for Ellie Walker, okay? Wow, okay. The love interest of Sheriff A. Taylor. But the role went to Eleanor Donahue, okay? Uh, soon afterwards, she was selected to play the role of uh, Charlene Darling, the only daughter of Bristol Darling. She had a crush on Sheriff Taylor. Pa, can I even look at, you, look at the pretty man? Wow. Um, Pearson looked up later returned to the Annie Graves show this final season in A Girl for Goober as Doris, who um, who would be the day in interest in Ken Berry's character, Goober uh, Pyle, okay? But Doris, including um, Bruce Goss, Bruce Goss four boys, played by the Dillard's Bluegrass Bands, okay? Lived in the mountains and came to the Town on the many occasions, okay. When in town, they enjoyed playing music with Andy with uh, one of Carly's favorite songs, a salty dog, okay. 
the one that made her cry were Sammy um River Bottom, okay? Bought um, the cabbage down to give your money the shoes and you won't go wet, okay? Ernest uh, T. Bass uh, had her eyes, uh, his eyes uh, on Colleen and b believe he had carried um, porn on rights because of her marriage to Doug Walsh, okay? Okay, um, uh, has been performed by, um, Sherberry Taylor, okay? Acting as a justice of peace, okay? Not by a preacher. Exactly. Hmm. He tried to steal away on the day he, that will be our main by a preacher, friend of the, the, the gathering, um, with a high power of the rifle, okay? He runs off the fully valid bride, okay? While Charlene died, uh, her hurriedly married with a preacher. Wow, okay. Um, Ernest T. discovers that person uh, in the veil was really body five. Wow. Charlene and Don had a daughter together. And a dinner, okay. They tried to betroth a dinner to Opie. It was a custody commentary in their family. Let's go. Trump called out with this engagement to OB and the Donia when he was discovered there was a legendary in the Taylor family. Wow. According to Jim Clark at the Annie Graves show, we won Rogers Club. The three songs in which Colleen performed on the show can be found on the album Songs That Make Me Cry. Wow, okay. In 1968, while she was singing in the opening act for the Annie Graves show, The Casino, in Lake Tahoe, Pearson met jazz musician Ronald Bernard Gus, um, Macasio, okay? Macasio, okay, that makes more sense. Anyway, um, um, who was playing bass in the Wild Jazz? The two married in 1968 and were together until his death in 2021. The couple spent a number of years in Las Vegas, Angeles, while Pearson and Warren were doing commercials. And so they decided to sell in Las Vegas, where Pearson worked as a location scout for film and television. In April 2008, Darwin received the star in Missouri Walk of Fame in Marshfield, Missouri. Pearson and Darwin slash Dillard's um, band members, um, Dean Webb and Mitch uh, Jade, were a hand representing the Darlings. Wow. In, night, in May 2016, and also in May 2019, Pearson appeared as a guest of honor in the May, Mayberry Midwest Festival in Danville, Indiana. Okay. He, he, according to a statement from the family radio for the Colonel of her as Aunt Maggie, he, she, Pearson, she died in her sleep, um, surrounded by family and friends on um, last Sunday. She was 81 years old. She has been in detail hell for the following the death of her husband, Gus. Wow. Now, my next death topic has to do with Rick Price, okay? The basis of the bad um, um, the move in 1991 up until the wizard, not with two Zs, from 1932 until 1985. He was an American English bassist who played the British Birmingham based rock bands. Most of them sight and sound to move in 1979, 1979, 1971, and Wizard for the two Z's, like I mentioned before, 1932, 1975. He was born in Birmingham, Warwick, Warwick, uh, sure, on June 10th, 1944. His first band were the C Cumbrians, who were inspired by the Shadows. The band moved to Summerers, who later changed the, their name to Sign Sound. And move in a more positive direction. Okay, makes more sense in any way. Uh, he b began collaborating with Mike uh, Shredden as a songwriting partnership. Price then joined the move in 1969 when um, staying in the group for two years. Well, and doing a successful tour in the United States. He also commentary bass tracks for the early success of the debut album of. E A E L O, okay. For the for the reasons that are unclear, none of the bass parts ended up in the final mixes. But the album was released in 1971. After leaving the move, um, 
He signed a contract with Gemini Records and then recorded for Shred Shredder, okay? The album, this is too crazy, crazy that released in 1970 in a solo album, Talking to Follow, in 1971. He then later joined and performed a group called, called Wayne and Light Fantastic before forming Mark Greer with Future Wizard, Drummers, Charlie Grimma, and Keith Smart, okay? He joined up, up again with one in the later some new band, Wizard, who had, he had two British numbers, one hit singles. See me, see my baby jive and angel fingers, okay. As well as no, number four, Christmas is a classic. I wish it could be my could be Christmas every day, all in night day free. After Wizard split up, he joined the Whistle Band. A pale steel guitar in nineteen seventy five, but they broke up in seventy eight. Plus also a member of the Brock and Berries from nineteen ninety until his death. Plus married to Diane Jean and nineteen seventies duo Pierce and Lee, okay. Um The couple trio called Torb as a Dio performed hits and new songs. Price died last Tuesday Tuesday. He was seventy seven years old. Next, my next step topic has to do with uh, Colleen Jones, okay? Born, um, Colleen Mary Jones on New Year's Day, 1948. She was an Australian rock radio and television journalist and social career who has held a career for media j industry for over 50 years. Wow, okay. Jones joined the Australian Broadcasting Commission now as the ABC American Broadcast Corporation in Canberra in 1963, and where I became the first female reporter for the Daily This Day Tonight, okay, Curious Affairs Television Program. She then became a presenter um, on Four Corners, a weekday, weekly um, current affairs television program from 1982 to 1981. From 1987 to 1984, she presented a spurry focused radio program called The Search for Miss for Me on ABC Radio National. Okay. What she interviewed people about their lives. In ninety six, um she she helped began hosting the weekly Bible program Australian Story on ABC television. During nineteen eighty eight, she uh, worked alongside Aboriginal broadcasters in Central of Australia. A political media association, Alice Briggs, as they produced their co first cultural and current affairs program for television. In 1998, she was appointed an ambassador for recommendation for Senate Cultural for Racial Recommendation, AO for short, that is. Um, in December 2016, she announced that she'll be leaving the ABC and step down for a role as Australian story. Okay. Although she started, but then she was not be retiring. She was a founding member of Australia Council of the Arts, formed in 1973. As well as a founding member, foundation member of the Australian Conservation Review Board, born in 1970. She was born January 1st, 1938. Grew up in Russia, New South Wales. Okay. She was married and then divorced early in her adulthood life. Later in her life, she was received in, her, in the Roman Catholic Church. She died following a fall in her home in Sydney last for yesterday. She was 84 years old. And look at the awards and biography after that. Anyway, she won numbers and met me awards. According to Loki in 1972, and several Australian Media Peace Prize with Gold Conciliation. She was made an officer in the Order of Australia in 1988. A O for short, that is, excuse me, for okay, anyway. And in 1989, I was awarded Archbishop of Sydney, um, Kardashian and Regardation of her contribution of sit Christian ideals in radio and television. National Trust of Australia, Bob Jones, and, uh, and Australia, Live Treasure in 1987. Excuse me, I broke it, anyway. 2007. She was made an honorary doctor of letters, D-L-I-T-T -T for short. Excuse me, I 
this burp did anyway. Um, by the University of Sunshine um, Coast. She will also receive a doctor's of letters under the uh, cost, okay? Degree at the University of Sydney on August 6, 2017. The books are as follows. The um, research from Minson ABC's The Collins Dole of 1989, based on the radio t program of the same name. Search Missing Volume 2, um, October 1990. Search Missing Conversation with Carl Jones, October 92. Search Missing Collection, ABC Books, 95. And the year I was born, anyway. I did a live, found missing, um, finally everyday live, ABC Books, 98, 2005. The Fruit Glass is Darkly, The Journey of Life and Grief of My Father. ABC Books in 2009. So, um, that's all. My, that's going to be three topics. Now I move on to my next step topic. Uh, and that's, of course, um, the author of this book, Roger Angel, okay? He was born that name, okay? And he was a, a American analyst, okay? Atheist, okay? Best known for writing on sports, especially baseball. If you watch this, David, it's for you. He was a regular customer in the New Yorker, okay? And was a chief fiction editor for many years. He wrote numerous works on fiction, not fiction, and criticism, which I was part of. Anyway, and for many years, he wrote for the annual Christmas poem for the New Yorker. He was born September 19th, 1920. Wow. Wow. I don't know how, I don't know how you, how, I don't know how, he was been on that long. Anyway, in Manhattan, okay. Angel was the son of Catherine Sergeant uh, Angel White, okay. The New Yorker's first pitching editor and stepson, renowned essayist E.B. White, the writer of Charlotte's Web, and I'm definitely going to talk about Stuart Little and Tropic and Swan and so forth in his books. Now, at that time, yes. Um. He's also the writer of May books, you know, and children's books, that is, E.B. White, that is. Now, Ar now Roger Ar Angel was, but he was raised the most part of his father, Ernest uh, Angel, that is. The author who became his head of the American Country Liberties Union. Now, E.B. White, I'm going to talk about him later. Right now, Angel was a 1948 graduate of the Home for uh, school and attended Hartford University, okay? He served in the United States Army Armed Forces during World War II, okay? Angel's earliest published works uh, were the pieces of short fiction and personal narratives, okay? Some of the pieces with these pieces were created in the Stone Arbor and other stories in 1960, okay? In the day in the life of Roger Angel in 1970, okay? Angel's first cooperated in the New Yorker when they when the short story titled Three Ladies in the Moor in March 1944, okay? He continued to contribute um with the New Yorker until 2020 when COVID hit us so badly. Anyway, in 1948, Angel was employed um with the Holiday Magazine, okay? A travel magazine that featured Liberty of uh, Wires. Angel was first wrote uh, professionally about baseball. If you watch this, David, this for you. Anyway, in 1962, when William Sean, editor of uh, New Yorker, had him travel to Florida. If you watch this, Billy, this for you. Anyway, for the Gators. Anyway, I'm going to say the Tom Tom. But anyway, to write about spring training. Anyway, his first two baseball collections for the summer game in 1972. In five seasons at foot, a baseball convention in 1937. Andrew has been called the poet lecturer of baseball, but he just disliked the term. I have not agreed with this. Anyway, in the review of the one more around the park for the Journal of Sport History, Richard C. Cuspo wrote that, gone for good, Andrew's essay on the career of sports Steve Blass, okay? Maybe the, the best piece that anyone has ever written on baseball. And or any other sport. I have to agree with Dave in this one. But anyway, over, another essay on Angel, the web uh, on the game, okay? Another epic pictures, okay? Duels between future major league all stars. And initial team teammates, 
Juan Dari and Frank Volia of the 1981 NCAA um, baseball tournament was called perhaps the greatest baseball essay of ever penned. Exactly, um, of these two. But anyway, um, by ESPN journalist Juan McGee in 2021. Okay? Angel contributed commentary to the Ken Barnes series Baseball in 1994. Okay? Now, personal life and death, and I'll get to these things that he wrote in the books and awards. Anyway, he had two daughters, Callie and Atis, for his first wife, Elvian, and a son, John Henry, with Carol and uh, Callie, would eventually be on the film with Annie Warhol, okay? Died before the suicide on May 5th, 2010, in Manhattan, while where she worked as a courier in the Whitney Museum of American Art. She was 62 years old. Well, in the 2014 essay, he mentioned her death with the kind of force and mystery of an advent. Well, and it struggled to compare it that uh, a beautiful daughter of mine, your child, has ended her life. Well, I was living in Portland, Maine, and died from cancer on February um, uh, 2nd, 2019. The ca- se- um, John Henry lives in Port- Portland, Oregon. His second wife, Carl, um, um, Waji, uh, Angel, who whom had married for 48 years, died, um, a- April 10th, 2012, um, with graduate brief cancer at the age of 63. He married his third da- wife, Margaret Peggy Moran, in 2014. He died of confession heart failure in his home in Manhattan yesterday. He was 101 years old. Wow, okay. For Angel, for the awards, that is, he received a number of awards of his life, including the George Polk Award for commentary in 1980, the Canada uh, Review Award for literature at, at team in 2005, along with um, a Burrow Echo, okay, and the Angel uh, Pen and EPN ESPN Life, uh, Lifetime Achievement Award for literature sports writing in 2011. He was a lifetime. Uh, Ex um, Abajual member of the Council of the Auburn School that was led to the Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Science in 2007. Okay. Angel was one of the into the baseball recoveries, strong materials in 2010, and it was of named 2014 of achievement on the J.G. Taylor Spring, Spring uh, Award. By the Baseball Players Association of America. Wow. In, on December 10th, 2013. His argument this old man in the New Yorker. Was a challenge and joy to be 93. Gamer at the National Magazine. Or for the essay criticism in 2013. In 2019. The of Nebraska uh, Press. Uh, published No Place I Will Rather Be. Roger Angel. In the Life of Baseball Ryan, a book about Angel's career written by Joe Von Randall. Now, here are some of his biography before we move on to the next uh, depth topic. Here we go. I got three more after this. We got um, Star and Bar and the other stories, um, 1960. Um, 19, uh, 1970, we got A Day in Life and Roger Ebel. Um, New York, Nike Press, 1970. We, in 1972, we got. Um, Summer Game, New York, next one, 1977, Five Seasons of Baseball Competition, New York City, um, Simon & Special Publishers published this book, 1982, Late Endings of Baseball Competition, New York, New York, um, Simon & Special Publishes, 1988, Season Ticket of Baseball Competition, Boston. Hodgson Mil- Milton in 1988. Anyway, 1991. Once more around the park. A baseball reader in New York, New York. Valentine's Books. Wow. 2002. A picture story in with David Cole, New York, New York. Um, Grand um, Central Publishing. 2003. Um, Steve Kirkman and there's a um, good game um, time. A baseball competition. Hard count of trade publishers. 
that was introduced by a reduction by Richard Ford. Now, about the 2002 book, I'm going to say this. It's about the New York Yankees pitcher, uh, David Cole. Okay, that's more sense. Anyway, 2006. Let me finish. New York to New York. Houghton, Mission, uh, Martin, Harcourt. Okay. So, in 2015, this old man, all the pieces, New York, New York, double day. Okay. Now, essay reported over competitions. I'm, and then we'll go to the poems. Okay. Um, Walking the next morning in September 24th, 2001. That was way days after 9-11 happened. Anyway, talking to town Tuesday after New Yorker. Okay. Um, February 14th, which is Valentine's Day, 2005. Pub personal history, Andy, New Yorker. Okay. Okay, then I don't know what year this came out, but this is a forward of New York, William Strong Jr. Uh, Okay. Now, I see a year. Anyway, Edward, Edward Brooks White, 2008. Helmet, um, Helmet of Style, okay. Four editions, Penguin. Okay, that makes more sense. Brian uh, Hard. Even for offers who do the, all the same, the time, excuse me. Jerry Segg, which is two day, one day after New Year's Day 2012. Anyway, Talk of the Town. Talk of Life and uh, Letters. New Yorker. Okay, that's more sense. Anyway, November 19th, 2012. Personal history over the wall. New Yorker. Anyway, June 10th to 17th, 2013. Climbing our life. True tribe. New Yorker. Page 89. All that makes a difference. Anyway, February 17th, 2014, which is three days after Valentine's Day, 2014. This old man. New Yorker. And finally, June 20th, which is about. Ten, like, six to, like, eight days before I turned 21. Frank Mandel, talking to town, postscript, New Yorker, and that's basically it. And then, like, lots of poems. Ha Eddie's Hawkins, 2014, and it's by Roger Angel, and it's about a, a New Yorker publisher. Anyway, and that's basically it. And I'll get to, um, E.B. White, uh, later on the, the program. Anyway. Let's go to our next step topic. And that's, of course, Mar Marnie Stallenberg, okay? And she was best known as her role of, uh, as, um, uh, it was American, she was American actress, best known for her role as, um, uh, Allison Stewart for the CBS of Soul Barbara as the World of Turns from 2007 to 2010, okay? She was born in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and she had an older sister, Corita, a playwright and an older brother, uh, Alan, a music teacher, okay? She was graduating from Barnes Stable High School in 2002. 2006 of May. Okay? May 21st, 1984 was when she was born. Okay, that's my fourth sense. Anyway, um, she graduated from State C Cell University, um, uh, in C Cell Valley, Pennsylvania, with a bachelor's degree in fear. December 2006, she moved to New York City, starting an audition for acting roles. She joined the Dramatic Guild of At America, okay, where she took part uh, in plays, reading, uh, also provision in the fall of fear, and then it's intangible, okay. In 2006, which is a year I started my filmmaking career, anyway, Starbuck was cast in the role of Allison Stewart, okay. She made her debut when uh, the character made the ca crossover appearance of Young and Restless. If you watch this, Dad, it's for you. Anyway, on two days before I formed the company. February 22nd, 2007, okay? I let her debut on As the World Turns the following month, which is the month after I formed the company. A after I formed the company. Anyway, Starburg and actress Audrine Flash was featured in the main online soap opera titled Digital Daytime, L.A. Diaries. Sternberg remained with, with Warren the Turns in this final episode on September 17, 2010, become the longest turn actor in the role of, the, as, of Allison. For his portrayal of Allison, Sternberg earned a daytime Emmy Award for nomination for the category of Outstanding Younger Actress in the Drama Series in 2010. In April 2020, she appeared at a virtual cast reunion hosted by Alan Rocher, okay? She made her film debut in the romantic comedy Made for Each Other in 2009. She made guest roles in television shows such as Fringe, 
Divorce, Manhattan, Love Story, Army Wives, uh, Cranberry Law, Elementary, and Blue Bloods. She's appeared on Amazon Prime Video's series, Alpha, Alpha House, okay? As Crystal in the last two episodes of the first season. Okay? She also plays Sherry Tainer in three episodes of the comedy drama series, Royal Pains, okay? She appeared in the Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival, Fear Productions of, you know, As You Like It in 2006, and South Pacific in 2011. She also appeared in the documentary film One Night Stand in 2011, alongside Shanisa Chinese, Chinese, uh, I've been out so for the first name, sorry, Jackson, um, Jesse Taylor, Taylor Ferguson, and Rachel Dratch. Okay. The film follows the cast of for 24 hours, they compose music, okay. Write the script and lyrics and put them on the lines, okay? Because the show will make its one night open and close in New York City's uh, Germanic Fear, okay? Excuse me. Anyway, um, in 2013, um, she was cast as Joe Sullivan and ABC's soap opera One Life to Live. 2014, she began portraying the immensest actress Peyton Adams. A Tower of the Dreams that premiered on YouTube on December 13th, 2013. The land moved exclusively to Amazon and Amazon Prime, created by Sonia Wagenstar. You all have to pronounce last name, her last name, sorry. It was a soap within a soap that follows the backstage drama of the official soap opera, Painted Dreams. In April 2019, she made a guest star appearance as Stacey on CBS's The Good Fight. Hmm. She married her boyfriend for 10 years after Zach Rob Bonas. Okay. On September 15th, 2013, she gave birth to her daughter, Julius Jones, on December 2nd, 2012, 2019. On the illness and death, on May 2020, she revealed that she had been diagnosed with insanitation brief cancer, which Dr. mistook a magnetic diagnosis that is common for the new mothers. Wow. She revised her cancer as the most obvious kind of primary of breast cancer, which doesn't look like a traditional brief cancer. I felt worried. More aggressive, offense younger woman. I have to, I felt worried, you know? And disguise itself as a brief fiend and fashion. You know, I just don't know what to do, Marnie. I felt worried, you know. How does one celeb celebrate a birthday after a stage for brief cancer? I don't know. I have felt worried for this young woman, you know. Diagnosed in the middle of the global pandemic while raising a five month old. Hmm. She wrote an Instagram post. Hmm. Her friends and family members set up a GoFundMe page for a medical expense and a goal of $75,000 to raise on. In October 2020, she died last Tuesday, four days shy of her 38th birthday. She died from a disease at the hospital in Broomfield, New, New Jersey. Oh, man, this is sad to me, I know. Okay, my next depth topic has to do with um, John A. A. Ward. I have announced his name. Anyway. He was an American actor. He was best known for playing the former DNC uh, chairman, Barry Goodwin, on the NBC television series, The West Wing, okay? He was playing Dr. Donald Anspog, okay, on the NBC television series, ER. He was also supplied for this voice for the Dr. Ar Arnie, um, um, pa ma I can't pronounce his name, sorry, in Half-Life 2, Episode 2. He was born on November 7th, 1946 in Seattle, Washington, okay, and raised, that is. Um, he attended the St. Joseph um, grade school, went off to prep high school, but graduated in Garfield High School in 1985. He graduated from Professor Adams Trainers Program at the University of Washington in 1970. He was one of the followers in 1973 of C Seattle's Empty Space Beer. He worked regularly in the company, member of the Seattle's Robert E. Fear, okay? 
Carol Friends, co producer EAP, ER, excuse me, ER, excuse me, first offered him an audition seeing him in the 1996 production of uh, Fabio Fabia. I can't pronounce this word, sorry, I can't say the S word, sorry, on the Mark Taper for in Los Angeles. Now, the following film from about 1988 up until Tell's career is Donald. Don, it's a lot of hog rolls and the curry rolls and things like that. But he's in a lot of con, a lot of things. I have one of two episodes two is a video game, but that's just me. But he was Doctor A. Arnie Marks, like I said, mentioned earlier. And um, wow, he was these television roles, but yeah, CSI, yeah. You know, yeah, it was hard, you know, hard time, you know, I just, I, I, I didn't know he was in bad company and things like that. He was in the worst movie ever made, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Turtles in Time, in 1993, if you watch this remix for you. But anyway, he died in Seattle on May um, 8th, 16th, 16th, 2022. He was 75 years old. Yeah, but he's also in these movies that I have not seen yet. Okay. Okay, my next step, my last step topic has to do with Henry Marcon, okay? He was um, an American composer, music instructor. He, um, he was, it was born, it was best known for it, um, it was born, um, um, in 1946, okay? It was best known for this one I got was, and, um, the Queen Emperor, um, Nor Norton Starbird and Max Evil, okay? One of the best popular, popular works in this one at Chamber Opera, basically, Byron Clore, originally composed in 1938 for the Central, Central City Opera, Central City, Colorado, based the born man for, was inspired by a painting in the same knit tile. But before it was Teller House Bar in Central City, Mel Cohn was also composed a free length city length um, excuse me, operas, Colin Tales, Hotel Ian, and Gabriel Stars. In addition, he wrote works to produce both television and film, including the permanent in 1936, excuse me, well as the pieces of voices, ballet, chorus, Neurovisions, Chamber Corporations. His other works began as a former, um, family member of the San Clara, uh, excuse me, spoke anyway, University Department of Music. He also acted as an instructor and gesture coordinator. His greatest music musical performance were probably, can you have announced it, Verdi, Britain, and Birthday. He died on May 12, 2022, which I forgot to add during that that topic. But anyway, following the lengthy illness, at the time of this passing, his home was Surrogado, California, one of the most distinguished American opera composers. The Washington Post said on January 1998. Now, before I get into E.B. White, let's have a moment of silence with regards to seven people right now. Thank you. Rest in peace, these seven. Now, before I begin this mobile con topic, I want to read you my uh, other topic, which is, of course, uh, E.B. White. Now, earlier this, early this episode, I said about Robert Engel, was his E.B. White's uh, stepfather. Now, E.B. White's stepson, excuse me. Now, what I said about E.B. White earlier, he was a six years old when he died. Now, the book, as I said earlier, I, he was an SDS and reported American writer and everything. So, as I said, he was the 1970 book, Trouble the Swan, 1952, Charlotte's Web, and Stuart Little. Now, um, he's also in books such as Less Than Nothing or Less, Less Thomas Sterling Wet Fernie in 1927, 
Wow, he was born in 1899. Hmm. Um, ladies called poems in 1929. Um, I can't read that S word, sorry. Uh, why is your, um, you feel funny to do so? By 1929, ho hum, news breaks in the New York, from New Yorker. In 1931, Alice Booth, um, uh, so, I can't pronounce that. It was 1933. Every day is a Saturday in 1934. Uh, case of the bicycle in 1938. Uh, okay. So many, uh, books are boring from these old years. Um, uh, it's bad man. But anyway. Secretary of American Humor in 1941. Anyway. I, I, I this is so much top of the ones. Where, okay, that's my one says. Anyway. One man's met me in 1942. The wall of flag, Eridos in the New Yorker, the federal walls, governor, and other matters in 1943. As I mentioned earlier, Stuart Little in 1945. Here was the New York in 1949. Charlotte's Webb in 1952. Second Tree for the Corner in 1954. The Elements of Style with William Charles Jr. in 1959. We published in 72, 79, 99, and 2005. The Point to the My Compass in 1962, The Charm of the Swan in 1970, Letters E.B. White from 1976, Essays about E.B. White in 1977, Poems and Sketches of E.B. White in 1981, and finally, there's a two more books that are with when he died, you know. Uh, Lines from New Yorker of 1990, and his World of E.B. White in 2011. The Box of P-Pack, Farewell to Model T, E.B. White Rear, um, that's basically it. Anyway, there are probably about two or three of these by E.B. White for Essays and Report. E.B.W. Um, says this, a step forward, okay? Defense of the Bronx Driver, and both of these were 1925. The year my papa was born. One of them came out a day before my papa was born. Anyway, once more to the lake in 1941. That was basically it for the readings. Those two are sh are E. B. White books. Uh, three of them are famous books. Anyway, if you watch this um Columbia Pictures and everything else, this is for you. But anyway, oh try stuff. Sorry. Anyway, my last topic has to do with Momocon. I'm not gonna read the guest for anymore, but today, but I'm gonna just say this, okay? Stay tuned, cause I'm gonna be off to go to Momocon next week. Because Momocon comes at around Atlanta for all geek culture connection. Atlanta, Georgia, May 26th to 29th at, at the round. Um, I'm going to be going to the 28th because if I go on the 29th, 26th to 27th, I'm not going to be able to go. You know, 28th, so be look out for that because I'll probably be going. Um, um, cannot wait because... Um, I'm sure they go and see celebrities in person, you know. It's going to be great, you know, because, you see, it's going to be an exciting time for me to go and see celebrities in person for the first time. Besides from James Day and Frank in person, but that's just me. I'm looking forward to it. But, uh, yeah, it's at downtown Atlanta, and the hotels and venues, but, you know, it's going to be a great thing. But, more kind of great big to ever great fans of Japanese anime. African American animation, comics, video games, tabletop games, celebrate their poet passion by cosme cosplay, cosme, huge emissary hall, meaning celebrity voice talent, which is gonna be a good idea. Designers, writers, the other fairy shows, which is my favorite shows of all time. Games, comics, and much more, uh much, much more over the four day event. I have to attend one day. That was basically it. Anyway, <coughs> Excuse me, and uh, that's gonna be it. So, yeah, I just can't wait till next Saturday. There will not be a Crazy Bunch's web show episode next that day, but there will be one on say like um in June, June the June the fourth. I'm not sure when, but that's just me. And that will episode of Crazy Bunch's web show episode number uh, 63. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next one, which is gonna be the Probably the next one coming up in June. I'm not sure. I'm not going to say Memorial Day. Because it's not going to be a Memorial Day episode this year. Fortunately. So, but there will be one in the next uh, two weeks. 
be a lookout for that. Till next time, so Joe's and Bob, peace of favor. Come over, Crazy Bunch's wife shows you guys for two. Till then, out. See ya.